big group this morning, 35 of you um, so far and counting up to 38. All right, I'm going to play a short video before we get started. So give me one second here. Hey, you Joe. What do you desire? What makes you itch? What would you like to do if money were no object? Well, how would you really enjoy spending your life? Forget the money. That's not what you want. Better to have a short life that is full of what you like doing. Than a long life spent in a miserable way. You'll be doing things you don't like doing in order to go on living, that is to go on doing things you don't like doing, which is stupid. Therefore, it's so important to consider this question, what do I desire? All right, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the first session of Ignite for this go around in August. Our topic today is lead generation, and Colleen Miklas is our instructor. Colleen is a top producer in our office and team owner of the Colleen Miklas team. They sold over $22 million in sales in 2022 and um, are well on their way to be crossing that again this year. Colleen has been licensed since 2004 and joined our company in 2019. She has served on the ALC for multiple years and is a partner in our company. Um, we are going to be going through the content today for about the first hour and then uh, Q&A at the end. So if you can save all of your questions or as they pop up, just go ahead and put them in the chat um, and I will help get those um, read out and answered uh, once the PowerPoint and presentation is finished. So without further ado, Holly Nicholas. All right, Joe, I'm going to share my screen. All righty. Um, screen share. Hold on one sec. Let me get this all up and running. Presentation One second. You see lead generation? Yep, we're good. Okay, we're ready to rock and roll. All right, good morning, everybody. Um, hey, Colleen, we actually yeah. see your presenter slide if you want to go back to just <laughs> the show. That one? Um, click the, yep, that one. This Perfect. one? Yes. Shit, I don't have all my notes then. Uh, <laughs> show presenter view, right? Well, that is showing us your notes. And Okay, so how can I... Do you want me to go through the slideshow and then you can look at your presenter view? Oh, cool, give me a second here. Yeah, I thought I had this all down pat last night. <laughs> that's okay. Why don't you? I want. Why don't I show the slideshow and then you can look at okay, your screen? That's fine. Presenter. That's fine. I updated a couple more things, but it's not the end of the world. All right. All right. Give me one second here. Sorry. No problem. Technical difficulty. Seven minutes later. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's, Let's roll. Okay. All right. So good morning, guys. Colleen Nicholas. Thanks, Jules, for the introduction. Uh, I started out with a little video of what do you desire? Because I know everyone on this call can desire more leads and a more efficient and effective way to generate them uh, to live your most productive life and making lots of money. So as one of our beliefs at Keller Williams, our success equals results through people is one of our beliefs. And through that, we don't have lead generation uh, without those people in our lives. So what is lead generation? Can anyone uh, throw a quick definition out there? Anything that generates a lead. There you go, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Monday, that's short and sweet on a Monday morning, I love it. All right, uh, so the next one is the definition of a lead. And Joe, I don't know how I'm going to just keep just jumping to the next slide. Sorry, it's like a pain in the ass. All right, um, so anyway, Sam, can you read out what lead generation is, definition of it? Uh, 
You're muted, Sam. Hold on. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. Lead generation is a marketing strategy that allows you to collect personal contact information from prospects. These prospects should be individuals interested in buying or selling a home, investors, or individuals who want to learn about you, uh, about what you offer as a real estate agent. Thank you, Sam. So we definitely want to make sure that in our lead gen, uh, there's prospecting and marketing. It's part of our one of our models at Keller Williams. And this is, you know, obviously we want those individuals who are buying and selling a home or investors or referrals. Uh, to we want to be able to communicate to them about what is offered as what we can offer as a real estate agent. Okay. The next slide is the today's agenda, what we're gonna go over in the lead gen model. Okay, we're first gonna start off, uh, there's gonna be five categories that I'm gonna to cover today. First, we're gonna talk about you being a lead generator. The second topic is uh, two, the lead, gener lead generation model itself. Number three, your sphere of influence. Number four, expanding your sphere of influence. And what does that look like? And then lastly, lead gen best practices. Uh, the questions and recaps and ahas will be at the end, the success system we're not doing. These are the five categories I really would like you to take notes on. And if you have any questions, uh, like Julia said, just throw them in the chat box or save them to the end and we'll address that. We wanna make sure that by the end of this session, you are able to generate business from the people you know and know you. Identify your sphere and calculate what that potential income opportunity looks like. Categorize your sphere and expand that reach and apply obviously our best practices of that lead gen. So again, as we are going through this, if there's topics that may pique your interest or you have a question about, save that to the end and we'll definitely uh, cover that. Okay, Gary Keller says that <clears throat> My fear of failure was greater than my fear of lead generating. So let's begin today's discussion around mindset. This quote basically clarifies that any lead generation is our number one job. And if you have that fear around doing it, it's the activity along with the lead follow-up, which lead follow-up is 10 times more important than lead gen, in my opinion, uh, which will be covered later throughout Ignite. Uh, keeps us off from failing and instead allows us to prosper. You should never stop lead generating the rest of your career and your business in real estate. 19 years later, this November, I will celebrate my 19th anniversary and I continue to lead generate. And you need to ask yourself, is your fear of failure greater than your fear of lead generating? Because on the next slide, lead generation is the number one key to being successful in real estate. It doesn't matter how great you are in selling houses. If no one knows you're in the business and they don't feel connected to you in any way so that you're able to reach out to them, why are you in real estate? Do not be the hidden real estate agent. You have two key components in your lead gen, and that's the sphere of influence and your database, which we'll get into in a little bit. But who has heard of your sphere of influence and what is it? It's the people that know you and the people that don't know you. And this is the group of people who know, like, and trust you for the people that do know you um, that are likely to do business with you. All right. And how do we gain access to that group? It's right here. It's called your cell phone because that's your whole life is right there, all your database. But getting back to the fear on the next slide, the lead generation fears and myths. And these are four fears and myths that we all, as in general, as real estate agents have come across. Number one, I think lead generation is very difficult. Do you confuse effort with enjoyment is the question. Lead gen is actually easy, it's just not fun. It is a task that we need to do. You don't have a business unless you're lead generating. Number two, I don't have time to lead generate. Okay, well that is a, a time issue. Do you time block for lead generation? Is it your time block in the morning? On our team, it is nine to 11, but maybe not today. <laughs> uh, they need to actually adjust their schedule so that they are lead generating. You have to adjust your schedule on Tuesdays when we have our office team meetings, or maybe your own team meetings if you are on a team. You cannot just dismiss this in your schedule. You need to make time to lead generate and follow up. I don't know what to say, okay? We have script books that you can go on. We have 297agent.com. We have a, a, a reference 
from our company website that you can go on and actually print script books or you can individually print scripts, okay? You need to master your dialogue skills needed in this business. This morning on our 8.30 call, we objection handle, okay? Do you know what to say when a buyer says, well, I really don't want to buy a house right now because the interest rates are so high? Do you just sit there and stare at them? Are you dumbfounded, not know what to say? Or are you ready for that rebuttal? And lastly, I'm afraid of making mistakes, okay? Lead generation is nothing more than a set of tasks and skills that are well documented. There are times you are not going to know what to say. Even 19 years later, there's times I people catch me off guard. And it's okay to say it. I'm not sure right now, but I'm gonna get that information for you. And, um, and I will get back to you on that, okay? You, these are four common myths. If you feel that you have any of these, you're not alone. That's why they're here. There's a lot of fear around it, but these are the same fears that Gary Keller and his quotes when he started out in the business. But these are the most common fears and myths, and you need to maybe take one at a time and slowly get over them, okay? On the next slide, you mean to tell me these leads will generate themselves, right? No, we need ourselves to lead generate on a daily basis. That was just kind of a fun slide. <laughs> And look at this opportunity that you have, okay? If you were to take your cell phone right now, go to your contacts and scroll all the way down to the end, you will have a number. If you don't believe me, you can spend a second. If you're not on your phone, look at them. And look at all those contacts in your, uh, in your cell phone. Those are people who know you and would do business with you. Those people trust you. They would refer you, okay? So if you were to take, in this per perfect example, they have 250 contacts in your phone and they're taking at 8% of your contacts, 8% of 250 is 20. 20 people would buy a home with you. If they gave you referrals, okay, those 20 people, or maybe it's people that didn't do business with you that are just in your phone, they give you referrals. They're talking, if you were to add the referrals and the people that in your phone that actually moved, you'd have 45 people on average. This is just an example. With an average commission of $5,000, you take those 45 potential leads times the five grand, that's $225,000 income opportunity. You can play around this example as much as you want, but the point is, where is your default in your business? Is it not following up with the people you know? Is it maybe not asking for referrals throughout the transaction or post-transaction, or whatever your system looks like? So take some time to do that and figure that one out. It's a little eye-opener, actually. It's a real eye-opener. Uh, when you really are down in your business and looking at your daily activities, are they incoming producing activities that are leading you to success? All right, so the next time, excuse me, the next slide, we're gonna move into the lead generation model. As you know, this is, there's four models in the MREA. The first one is the economic model, which Mike covered in the uh, sales meeting uh, two weeks ago. The second is lead gen model, and that's what we're going to be, I call it the LG. Uh, this is what we're going to be covering today, okay? It's in the MREA. If you don't know where it's at, it's in the second section, pages 133 to 151. And if you don't have this red book, it's right at the front desk. Ask Kate. You can see it. And actually, I've taken mine to uh, Office Max, and um, they bought, they took a, they spiraled it for me. I take out the binder because I go in it so much to look at it and read. But refer to that. Keller Williams, as you know, has a model for everything. And your number one job is to lead generate. All right. You may think that it's complicated, but you need to build those relationships with each other in order to be successful. This is a relationship business. We are in sales. The more relationships you have, the more business you have. This model tells us how to get into relationships with people, stay in relationships with them, and you to be the real estate expert of their choice by buying and selling. So that, that funnel, that contain, I hate to say container, that's how they call it, but I'm going to call it the database. So in this section, they will say container. I'm calling it a database, but this is your lead gen model, okay? Because this is all about the relationships, and we're going to break this down by one by one. It's a lot of circles and arrows and everything, and we're going to go through it so that it's uh, you can understand it. So moving around uh, to the next slide, you are, like I said, in a relationship business, okay? The more relationships you have, 
the more business you have. This will help you get into relationships with people and be their expert of choice. All right, so the three keys of the LG model. All right, the first one is prospecting and marketing. There's two key ways to lead generate, and these are the two key ways. You got it, Jules, thank you. Um, lead generation is simply people getting into your database so you can track that relationship with them. So as you can see at the top of the model here, there's two different activities that bring leads into your business, prospecting and marketing. A lot of leads or a quantity of leads gives you good quality leads. Leads are fueled for your economic engine. And here's the truth you must never lose sight of. You can never have enough leads. And that is exclamation point, capital letters, never. Jules, next one. <clears throat> It's best practice to generate the leads through a marketing-based, marketing-enhanced approach. So prospecting is proactive and direct. You're actively searching for the leads. There's low cost, or basically sometimes no cost. You yield a quality of leads, which in turn gives you, uh, which in turn gives you quality leads. You establish personal relationships. You keep in contact with them, with the market of the moment. And you overall, in the end, you are increasing your confidence and skill. If you were to tell me I was teaching a class on lead gen four years ago, I probably would have said, hell no. All right, so you will become more confident in your skills if you yourself are continuing to practice your scripts, uh, about time blocking your time, and following up with those leads as they come in. With marketing, you're putting your information out there to attract the leads through sources like social media, print, radio, promotional um, materials. But for the beginning and for the most part, you wanna just make sure that you're prospecting to make sure that, that that's a low cost, uh, no, about, no cost method for you, whether it be circle prospecting, open houses, you know, putting your yourself out there to say, I am would like to be a realtor of choice. Okay, and like I said, uh, Joel's next slide is there's so many different ways prospecting can come in. Past clients, circle prospecting, direct mail, you can read them all there. That's just the tip of the iceberg in terms of opportunities that are out there as realtors. Okay, we are going to move into um, a little bit more talk about this. The market. Your preferences and your budget and your goals will dictate what type of lead generation you employ. You employ. So top agents normally use and track their lead sources. I know on our team, we have a spreadsheet that there's a drop-down box that every lead that comes in, it says, is it, uh, we call it the CMIC team referral to another agent or an agent to the C-tip CMIC team. Is it Realtor.com, Zillow, SOI, SOI referral? I mean, we have a whole you know, drop-down box. Bluma goes in there, and then we can categorize. I can, as a team owner, quarterly, monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, and annually on what is the majority of our business. And I can guarantee you the majority, I know for a fact, is our sphere of influence. So staying in contact with those people that you already know. There's no single approach or method that's going to bring you leads all the time. But I think overall, the majority of most people, it is your sphere of influence. These people know you, they trust you, and they want to continue that relationship with you on a business level. All right, even though you won't rely on one single lead generation, you're going to do with all of them. But I think every top agent could give you their top two to three lead sources, if you were to ask. And I think the purpose of Ignite is you're fully... Focus mainly is on prospecting because we know we're successful lead generating is prospect based. Okay, it's less expensive and you're protecting your business when the market slows down. As you, if you're not feeling it now, I know we are feeling it. Um, and the prediction is the fourth quarter is going to be um, even a little bit more slower, but that's a mindset. Can, can it be slower or could it be an opportunity for you out there to gain more market share as agents are um, getting out of the business? Okay, we want to really focus on your prospecting overall, though, with your SOI. Okay, we're going to be on the relationship uh, slide, Jules. This is, um, sorry, 
All right. Uh, the second area of your LG model is setting up your database and feeding it. Okay. Once you have a lead, you need to create a relationship with that person. For context, you want to sustain and strengthen your relationships. Sustaining that is what we see in the model is cultivating eight contacts for conversion. It's going to be at the bottom of this database slash container. All right. So when we say conversion, we mean to move them from a leader contact to an appointment. Converting a leader contact to an appointment means your client has the intent to buy or sell real estate at some point. Is it maybe an A buyer, a B buyer, or a C buyer? We have the appointment. All right, you've made the calls, you've reached out, you've set the appointment, and we need to convert at the appointment. You can build a relationship on the phone, you convert at the appointment. Okay, next slide, Jules. Because if you feed it, they will come. Okay, this is relationship management. You cannot, someone gives you a lead or a, a family member gives you a lead. And I know Tammy Jones talked about this one time. She had $600,000 buyers wrote on a piece of paper and it ended up in her backseat and she never followed up with it. Okay, that should be you know, your lead time blocking in your morning or your afternoon, whenever you do it. And then an hour after to do all that lead follow up, putting them in your database. Jules, next. Uh, the globe. Building relationships will open the doors you can't even imagine. Jules, can we go back two slides, please? <clears throat> oh, that's, I, I, all right, this is fine. Um, when I started here at Keller Williams four and a half years ago as a solo agent, um, I could not break through my threshold of $10 million at Remax where I was before. Now today I have a team of seven. We sell between 78 houses a year. I have doubled that my volume. And there is no way in God's green earth when you told me that was gonna happen when I walked through these doors January of 2019, that that would happen. I was like, no, no way. And it has, because I have been intentional about focusing and taking the models and systems that Keller Williams offers um, and also really, really tapping into that relationship management and not looking at this as a transactional uh, business, more of a business overall. All right, so getting back to the relationship management, perfect slide, thank you. As you gather these people's information through marketing or prospecting, after you've generated the lead, the next step is to put them into your database. Okay, at Keller Williams, we give you a free database, it's called Command. If you're not familiar with Command, talk to uh, someone in leadership and they will connect you up and it's also through our 297agent.com. Command is more than a database, though. It's a platform that you have access to all opportunities, and everyone should be on a smart plan, and you can monitor your opportunities through there. Opportunities is a tab where you can go on track your transaction management. Okay, we also have a transaction coordinator. If you don't want to manage your own transaction, that's Liz Kosminski. She works for the Market Center as well. But a smart database is going to provide you with the ability to have planned and meaningful communications with those in there to keep you in relationship with that. Okay, so think of this smart database as a data bank because it's generating money for you. There is nothing more valuable in your business than your data bank. Thank you. Uh, so we use the terminology of leads and contacts to categorize people in your database. All right, your sphere of influence is the people you know and the people who know you. These people are contacts with whom you have permission to engage in a two-way conversation. Leads are people who have shown interest. They've actually raised their hand and they've not engaged in a two-way conversation with you yet. Okay, so what are some leads? Uh, what are some examples of leads you can think of? Might be social media. It might be open house. It might be a sphere, people in your neighborhood that maybe you don't know but you've heard from a referral from the lady down the street that she's he or she's looking to sell, okay? So these are the two buckets that these need to be categorized in. And the way you communicate with them with each segment is unique because that is what a CRM does. Hence the next slide. <laughs> your database is your business. You need to feed it, you need to fatten it, but whatever you do, don't put your database on a diet. That was kind of cheesy, but I liked it. All right, you need to work this and you need to have everyone in there on a touch plan, whether you use command, 
uh, whether you use, uh, I, we use Brimity. I mean, there's so many opportunities out there, but maybe there's somebody new on this call or you're a solo agent and you can't afford it. Use command. We have one here for you. It's free. Make yourself be intentional and in taking an hour and learning it each day, each week, whatever that what your schedule looks like. But invest in your time in touching that. And then we also have the DT D2 schedule. All right, we are in week 31 this week right now. So you should be calling all your C's and K's in your database and texting your I's. I personally do last names. You could do first names, okay? But this should be part of your lead jetting, okay? Lead generation. This is a simple schedule to follow each week. Uh, this is, it, all you have to do is print this out and put it on your phone, in your phone. Every Monday I have it in, the letters to, to call and who to text, okay? So you can just, however it's tabbed. Also a recommendation when you're tagging people in your database, uh, for example, Colleen Miklas, I'm going to put Colleen Spear, and I'm going to put M. So when M pops up, all the M's in my database are going to come up. And if I was in someone's database, they'd be calling or texting me. Okay, so if you don't know how to do it or you're feeling overwhelmed because it can be overwhelming, I, I'm walking. Um, I, I will admit that it can be overwhelming and you need to clean it up. I'm a walking witness to this myself. So this is a simple schedule, though, to follow. All right, types of communication. Each time you reach out to your database, it's called a touch. A purposely planned series of touches is called a campaign. A coordinated campaign over time puts you in front and center of people's minds, right? Out of sight, out of mind. These touches are how we nurture and strengthen our relationships with our clients, friends and family and future leads. Okay, someone have, having someone in your database doesn't make them a client, okay? But reaching out consistently and systematically with value deepens that relationship with, will, that will lead them to choose, to choose you as their realtor of choice, okay? So one way to do this is through automatic touches. In command, like I had said, we had smart plans and we have opportunities. Tomorrow morning, Jim Gable is going to get on the call and talk about the eight by eight uh, plan. You know, how do you, over time, touch base with your clients? There's the 36 touch program. There's, you know, I there's so many different plans out there. Jim will talk about the eight by eight way. This is a systematic way of establishing relationships and cementing in their mind what the opportunities for business for you and them. Once a week for eight weeks, you're going to reach out to them. And Jim will go into detail regarding that uh, tomorrow. But this is a, many different ways of types of communication that you can uh, do with your clients. Okay. All right. And then the last uh, part three is the final piece of the lead gen model is your client and referral loop. Once the lead is converted to a contact, they can either put them in new or repeat business and they can provide referrals for you. Do you have a system in place, ask yourself, when you're asking for referrals during the transaction, at the end of the transaction, or hey, I would love to do, an, uh, do business with you. Excuse me, if you, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, can do me one thing during the course of this transaction, can you think one of one or two people that you feel is uh, in need of a realtor, whether they're looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate? You need to raise your hand and ask the question. Well, I, you know, I would like to help you out. I'm looking to grow my business. And is there any way you could help me out with that? And don't be shy in asking that because people want to help other people out. You're having a problem. You want to reach a goal. You know, there are opportunities out there. So we want to stay in touch, okay, for new repeat and referral business. This is part of the model because regardless of the business that you bring in or how long it takes you to do business, they continue to stay in your database. It is your job to build that relationship over time so that they're ready to transact again or provide additional referral business. Okay. So putting it all together. The lead gen never ends. It's best when it's time blocked. All right. 
determine the size of your business as you nurture your leads and continue to lead generate for new sources of business you will either be transacting from new repeat or referral business this is the most common thing to remember that lead gen is something that and like i just said it just is never ending and you need to time block for that so if you have a big business or you want to reach 2 million this year you want to reach 5 million six seven whatever that looks like break that all down into months seasonality months you know, there's a different percentages by each month. What does that look like by weekly? What are your conversion rates on a buyer and seller? And at that time, you need to figure out how many calls and contacts you need to make. We just did it on a team mid-year review with our team. Um, if you're behind or ahead, you know, how much do you have to make up? And what do your incoming producing activities look like? Okay. So the next section, I've talked about you, the lead generator, and I've talked about the lead uh, generation model. We're going to move into your sphere of influence next. How do we categorize our sphere of influence? Okay. And this is how you will tag your clients into your CRF. And I want you to expand beyond your immediate relationships. Okay. The only way you're going to grow your business is to expand. So sure, we have all your family and all your relatives and your neighbors and our, maybe teachers you haven't talked to in a while, okay? But do you also have maybe your attorneys or accountants in your, uh, the bank teller for uh, in your uh, CRM? Do you have the lady who does your nails and your hair, masseuse, maybe the kid's babysitter, kid's babysitter's parents, are they in your CRM? Who's your landscaper who details your car? You have a cleaning lady. I mean, so on and so forth. There's so many. And other also, any other small businesses you have, maybe your grandchildren's or children's businesses. How can you expand your immediate relationships? Look at these categories and see if you can challenge yourself this week, because I'm going to give you homework, to expand those relationships in each of those categories. And you can add some of your own categories. These are just some they gave us and some I kind of came up with on my own. But you need to know that that sphere of influence is your database, which is turning into your data bank, which will turn because you're gonna nurture it, right? All right. Next, the old bull law. And we have Eddie on this call, our bull coach in our office. If you change the way to look at things, excuse me, change the way to look at things and the things you look at will change, okay? As you saw in the last exercise that we did just about your sphere of influence, the thought of the members of your sphere and influence simply by viewing them as categories, as people you know. Now we do have a bold uh, a coaching program called Bold, probably if memory serves me correctly, will probably be offered at the, after the beginning of the year. Uh, you have an opportunity to experience and take this coaching program. It stands for business objective with a colon, a life by design. All right. One of the greatest things about Bold is helping you create a mindset of abundance and wealth. And this is what you need to have is the mindset of lead generating. Okay. Because that abundance in, is going to come and that growth for sure as heck is going to come. It'll help you shift your mindset is what we call using bold laws. And this is actually one of the laws. My One of my favorite laws is if it's not in your calendar, it doesn't exist. I mean, the first time I ever took bold, I was like scared shitless. I was like, what, what, what are they going to make us do? Why is it called bold? I figured it's probably something strong if they're calling it bold. But um, I have just, I needed to learn back in the day when I came to, uh, became a real estate agent, that everything in my calendar was an appointment. That if I was going to one of my daughter's swim meets, if I was going to one of my son's baseball games or a football game, Everything is an appointment. And I was letting my clients run me and I wasn't running my business. I was just listening to them and my family was being neglected. So I changed that coming to Keller Williams. Well, it took me a little bit longer to do that. But, um, as I started to grow and my mindset started to change, that I needed to start taking control of my clients and my clients were not taking control of me because I changed the way I looked at things and my things changed. You know what they said? 
Oh, oh, I respect that. Sometimes I told him I had a baseball game or a football game, but there were times I just said, I have an appointment. Can instead of five, can we do six? Oh, sure. And I was like, wow, this actually works, right? So it does work because being a successful agent is about finding more people to help you buy and sell houses. And they need to respect your schedule like you respect theirs. So when you change how you look at the world, you will find more of those people that you can help out there. And that's all in your sphere of influence. Okay, we're gonna talk now about expanding your sphere of influence. Uh, and what does that look like? So getting back to our touch campaign, there are several interactions that can happen during these touches. It could be face-to-face -face coffee. Let's go have lunch. Let's go have a cold beer. Let's write a note to the client. Uh, maybe it's an email. You need to have all of their contact information. That means address, emails, cell phone numbers, maybe a work address, maybe a work email, whatever that is. Your uh, Because there is a rating on, in your most CRMs, if you're at 100%, uh, do you have all that contact information for your clients? All right, we want to reach out in various ways. You just don't want to constantly be texting, constantly be emailing. That's like boring. I mean, get in front of people's faces. Yes, it's more expensive and time consuming if you were to write a handwritten note versus an email, but that sure as heck, I just got one this morning. We were out of town this weekend and I had to get the mail and someone wrote me a handwritten thank you note. That means more to me and I'm sure a lot of people than anything then versus just a generic email with your default signature that someone made up for you. All right, this is a handwritten note that they took a time out to thank me for something and they signed their name, okay? You can reach out to the title companies during a transaction or after it closes to get your client's date of birth, okay? Plop those dates of birth into your contact and reach out and send them a message. Mail them a lottery ticket and a birthday card. You know, make that a system in your, in your business. You want to reach out and be able to give value to them, right? This is what's going on in your neighborhood. Anyone you know looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate. So adding that information, asking for the business, you're, you're gaining that strength and the connections because you want to have lunch. I mean, do you, back in the day, I used to say Thursdays at 12, I was calling someone up and going to have lunch with them. Can you challenge yourself and your schedule to do something different than what you're doing now? Because obviously, if you're not meeting your goals, what you're doing now is not working, right? But they say that's the definition of insanity. You got to do something different. Can you put every Thursday for the, the rest of the third quarter tomorrow? Today's the last day of month one of Q3. Could you put something into your schedule that says, hey, in the next, all of August, there's four or five Thursdays. Um, I'm going to go have lunch with someone I haven't talked to in a while. Can you do that or go have coffee at breakfast? I mean, wh whatever that may look like. <clears throat> There's five Thursdays in August, okay? That's five, so it's 20 bucks. It's 100 bucks. It's a write-off, first of all, number one. Number two, which that's a class in a couple weeks. Uh, but it's just something different that you're doing. And you're going to be literally amazed at when you start talking. You don't even have to actually talk real estate because they're going to know. Um, what you want to talk about, or just they want to know what's going on in the market. Wherever I go uh, for a function, I know the people I'm going to be with, and I know what city they live in and what is going on, because the minute I uh, get to that party or that wedding or that picnic or whatever it is, someone's going to say, Kyle, do you see that house that went up for sale down the street? What's going on in the market? Everybody wants to find the realtor and talk business. Okay, so when you're reaching out, let's say you don't know what to say, okay? Let's say you're doing, um, next slide, Jules. Uh, you're doing <clears throat> a farming, or you just wanna reach out to people. Like somebody just put in the chat box about the 297agent.com. Please revisit, or please visit it, revisit it if you need to get some more scripts. But here's just some basic scripts you know, I'm building on business and I know and the people they know. Do you know of anyone from, you know, family, friends, work, your neighborhood or a group that'd be looking to buy and sell real estate? I would be pleased to be a resource for them. Okay, or as something as simple, I'm looking to hit my goals this month and I'm a little bit down. Could you help me? You know, you can ask the generic term, but maybe, you know, 
you need to reach out and just ask for something. Sometimes everyone says, well, I just really don't know what to say. So these are some conversation examples. I added the last one in because I've used that one. There's nothing wrong with asking for help. If you don't want to reference the 297 agents or it's so overwhelming, pick one link. There's books in there and there's uh, links in there. Print one out, full punch it, put it in a binder so it's in front of you when you're on the phone. Okay, and ask for the referral. Every person you connect with, you need to just ask for the referrals. Okay, and the last, the fifth category is the last topic of the day is lead generation best practices. What do you do to organize your lead gen and the processes you use? <clears throat> so as you begin your real estate career, it can be a little overwhelming. There's all these classes we have, all this training. I don't know what to say. Where, where are my leads going to come? I need money, all this. You need to start establishing systems and best practices that will establish a productive lead generation system. All right, the best lead generation program will be the one that you will be consistently used and also delivers the leads, okay? So you need to keep track of where your leads come from. All right, like I said, our team has that drop-down box of a lead source. All right, you don't know how to do it, ask for help. I don't know how to do it. I just paid someone to do it for me. <laughs> All right, I just need to keep selling houses. Uh, if you don't know how to do it, it's like I said, ask for help. There's enough people around here to help you. Audit where your lead sources uh, to determine where your top lead sources are. And that's where those top three or four, maybe it's two to three lead sources. You could break it out like I break it out by month, by quarter to see where we're at, what those percentages look like. So if someone were to have a conversation with me and say, Colleen, what's your top lead source? I can intelligently answer that because I know my numbers. All right, you need to diversify your database. We all get stuck in our own little bubble in our own little world and we got to reach out. We got to get involved in clubs and networking communities and building more relationships outside of our comfort zone. It's the only way you're going to grow your business. You know, I have a new assistant and we're cleaning up our database. She says, you guys have a lot of friends. And I was like, well, it's just over the course of years from our kids' three schools, I become friends and clubs we belong to or boards I've been on. And all of that was just me raising my hand and saying yes to something and reaching out and maybe being a, a room mom. And I had the class list so I can use that. And everyone knew I was a realtor and oh, we're at the parent party. And I can't even tell you how many leads I've gotten from my kids' schools over the years and continue to do so because those people have become my friends and I have a relationship with them. All right. A diverse database and sphere of influence prepares your business for changes in the market. So even though maybe set, settling down right now, do you have enough in your pipeline to say if every single one of my buyers or sellers bought, and I challenged my agents last week, I had a discussion with them, were to buy, what would your business look like right now? Yes, we're down in inventory. Are you making excuses or are you going out to create results? Right, another gold law. Thanks, Eddie. All right. <clears throat> so you need to be consistent and lead generate every day. You got a time block and you got to put it in your schedule. All right, so very simple. We started this challenge this year, adding five contacts each week to your database. Talk about diversifying your uh, database or your portfolio, so to speak, of people, okay? If you did five contacts a year, or excuse me, five contacts a week, there's 52 weeks in a year, you've added 260 new people to your database, okay? Five years, as Gary says, you can be anywhere you want in five years, right? That's 1,300 people that you added. If you go back to that example, Jules, don't change the screen, but just saying. Original, if you did 8% of that, 1,300, and Michael Kraske's probably doing the math, uh, you look at all that extra money that could be coming in, okay? 1,300, now you're 10 years, it's 20. I mean, those, that's, these are astronomical numbers if you just do five per week. It's the same example we use when we talk about, well, I want to sell 1 million this year. Okay, and each month I need to sell this and then each week and you need to break it all down to the day. How many calls and how, what's your conversion rate look like? So this, at the same time, you need to look at that database. Okay, and what are we adding for the context per week? Maybe it's the waitress that waited on me last night at um, Flower. Okay, maybe it's my landscaper. Well, I mail him a bill, but is he actually in my database? Okay. 
So are you thinking each day about adding contacts to grow your database? And those that are in your database, do you actually really have 100% of their contact information? So challenge yourself to do that. So the next, um, the next one is just time blocking, like I've repeated so much on this call though, uh, but to make sure that you are time blocking. Every top agent I know lead generates and they time block during that time. They may lead generate more often than not because sometimes you get on the phone with someone and they really wanna talk about things for a while, but it's best to schedule it. You need to take action on the number one thing that's the most important as a real estate agent, because once those leads come in, your lead follow-up, the money's in the lead follow-up. Well, Good gotta, morning. Good morning. You need to have a lead in order to follow up with that. All right, so please try to look at your schedule for the day. And does it have lead, lead gen in there today? You don't have to answer me. Uh, but, but you're preparing your mindset to success. Maybe you need to role play and script play with a partner. Print out one of those books on our company website. Uh, that, that website is for you, the agents. It's a tool and a resource for everything that you have. I'm telling you guys, they don't have this at any other brokerage. I've been to three others. You're very lucky to be here. And Carrie, who built that, did an amazing job to give you as a resource. It's right there. Print it out, use it, and talk about it on the phone. You don't know what to ask next? Write it out. Challenge yourself for 30 days. Can I, I have one agent on my team writing out for 30 days her expired script. You know what she said to me after the sixth day? Colleen, I didn't even have to look at it. I knew what the next question was because she now on the phone knows that, oh, I know exactly what to ask next. Okay. Have conversations with people who are doing more than you. Do not hang around agents who are doing less than you. I mean, it's nice to help out and give back. I love that. But in order for you to grow, you have to be around people that are selling more than you. What is working more in your business that I need to do in mine, okay? Grow, doing that lead gen, growing that database and staying in contact, all right? And you need to follow up on your commitments. You're making a commitment to yourself and to your business and you need to show up and make that promise. And of course, we all need to always be in compliance with uh, <clears throat> the TCPA Act and the no call list, all right? So I'm gonna give you some homework. Because of course I have homework, I'm a mom. Everyone's got homework, all right. Your homework is this. You need to get your phone ringing, okay? First, if you don't have this red book, the MREA, you need to go get it downstairs from Kate or Kelly or Rocky River. I'm sorry, I'm at the office, so I say downstairs. Um, you need to get that and you need to read it and you need to tab it out and highlight and your dog ear the page and pencil and revisit it. 19 years later, I'm still reading this. As a matter of fact, inside my books, because I do this in all my books, it says to Colleen from Kelly, Christmas 2006. That's how long I've had this book. And I wasn't even at Kelly Williams in 2006. Um, you need to uh, revisit that and read that on your to-do list. If you don't read books, make a change and read that. Number two, I want to get your, you need to get your contacts into command or a CA, CRM of your choice, including 100% all the information. Email, cell, address, clean it up, okay? There's 26 letters in the alphabet. There's 52 weeks in a year. Could you say this week, I'm gonna do my letter A and I'm cleaning out my phone and I'm cleaning out my database and I'm not stopping. I will tell you the M and S's are a lot, <laughs> but can you be uh, intentional about cleaning up your database and everyone's gonna have a tag and everyone's gonna, even if they have a dog, put pet owner, landscaper, tag the last name, tag the first name. You're, if you have a team, make sure that you're tagging them Colleen's sphere of influence, Sam's sphere of influence. Because if we want to reach out to certain uh, spheres, I don't want, if I want to reach out to my sphere, I don't want, you know, Mr. or Mrs. Krieger in mine, although they are in my sphere. But you know what I mean? The more detailed the tag in your uh, contact database, the better. Okay. I would challenge all of you to implement a touch program, including the DT2 schedule. I can't ever say it. it's like a tongue twister for me. Uh, Jim Gable's eight by eight. Well, it's not really Jim. We can talk about it. Uh, the eight by eight program or a 36 touch program. Okay. Number four, show up tomorrow for the meeting. All right. It's 930. You've been inundated with communications with regards to it. It'd be nice to see more than 10% on that call. You need to learn about the eight by eight. 
come to the meeting tomorrow and show up on Zoom. You need to ask for referrals during these touches, all these touches, these plans you have on. Ask for referrals. And if you haven't, start doing it on your next transaction. All it takes is one. The more comfortable you become asking for it, the easier it's going to be. Number six, adding five contacts to your database each week. <clears throat> Build out a spreadsheet. We track it by spreadsheet. So if I were to bring up your CRM, and I know you have 462 people, every Monday my assistant goes in there, and if there's not 468, we're in the, or, or 467, excuse me, we're in the red zone. And that accumulates and accumulates and accumulates each week. Okay? It's pretty uh, a big awareness factor when you want to look at that and say, oh shit, I didn't add my five contacts last week. Now I'm going to double up and do 10 this week. It gets really hard when you're in the 20s and 30s just because you're not adding five and being intentional about it, okay? And then adding testimonials as a reference for your leads. You guys should have buyer packets for your buyer's testimonials and you should have seller packets for your seller testimonials. I don't want to sit at a listing presentation and read about my buyer who said wonderful things about me because I found them in their first house. You need to separate your testimonials, include them in your packets so that if by chance, uh, you know, John and Sally down the road want to go sell their house and you want to, instead of maybe dropping off a pre-listing packet, you want to send them something, you would attach your testimonials in that. They know a little bit about you and your work ethic prior to you getting to their kitchen table, okay? I know a lot of times we take these classes, we oh, this is amazing, the information, we type up all our notes, we file them away, and then we don't do anything with them, okay? It is great info at the time, but we all have to get, and then when you go back to your daily grind of what is normal to you. So I challenge you to take the time today, Monday, July 31st, the last day of the month, the last day of the, uh, the first month of quarter three, implement at least one, if not two of these items this week. And then challenge yourself maybe in towards the end of August or into September to do a new system. Maybe something that's not working and you need a more efficient system, okay? If you need help, there is 466 agents in this market center to help you and a leadership staff of, I think it does. Okay, so there are so many people to ask and to help, you just need to raise your hand. And I will guarantee you the little sit down, the little email, the little conversation you have with that person is one step closer to you being more successful each day. All right, so that's, um, thank you. I wanna thank leadership for asking me to do this uh, portion of Ignite. Um, and thank you, Julia, for being my moderator and my screen flipper. I thought I had it all down pat last night with my son dancer. <laughs> Um, here's my contact information. If you need, I am on the third floor of the Pepper Pike office down the hall from the training room. If you ever, um, if I'm here and you want to pop in, there's my email, my cell phone. Uh, that's pretty much me. I don't know what's in the chat, Jules. Uh, all right, I'm jumping there right now and see if anyone has any questions. I know I talk fast. I've been told, so sorry if I talk this. All right, we got All a couple right, of different people sharing some things. So um, Anne That's said, true. one of the best lead generation strategies is to know your inventory instead of sitting and staring at the computer screen, preview homes. No. Yes, Anne, thank there. you for that, 100%. It will help you at listing presentations. Uh, when you sit there and they say, oh, well, you don't sell anything in this neighborhood. You use your market center as your... Uh, as your testimonial. Yes, I don't, I personally am not sold in Cleveland Heights, but Keller Williams, Greater Metropolitan has sold over X, Y, X amount of houses. And you know what? Uh, two were down the road that were on tour last Tuesday and I actually went to them. And so this kitchen is, looks like this, this kitchen looks like this and so on and so forth. So I tour is starting, if for those of you who are newer, Tuesday's tours from 11 to three are a big thing. Back in the balance market, uh, they're slowly starting to increase. Kate sends the broker sheet on Tuesday morning. So tomorrow after the team meeting or maybe during or before, you will get a broker store and you ask, what the heck is this? That is an opportunity for you to go preview homes. Sometimes showings happen with the permission of the listing agent, but it is your job to study the area and know the market. Whether it be Cleveland Heights, Rocky River, Mayfield Heights, whatever the case may be, but use your market center as uh, stats, as a uh, 
as proof that we have success in your area. And I'd like everyone to wish a Merry Christmas in July. It's only 20 more weeks uh, till Christmas. So my hat's on in case anyone's wondering. <laughs> It's my um, favorite holiday. Got, anyway. A lot of awesome information and thank yous to you, Colleen. Um, the the book that you yeah. mentioned, getting up with scripting, I think that was the MREA. Yeah. Um, some people put that in the chat in Sorry, response I to said that. It's short. Yeah. Um anyone okay. else have any questions or obstacles that they run into what in lead generating or getting motivated while we have Colleen here? <laughs> Thanks to the Christmas tree. <laughs> well, feel free to reach out if um, you need anything from me or anyone uh, based on everything I say. <laughs> I love everyone's taking this Christmas. For those that celebrate, don't want to offend anyone. <laughs> All right, well, All right. Um, make sure we're going to follow up with everyone so that you have the links for the rest of the week. Um, we are back at 930 on Wednesday and Thursday. Um, and don't forget that you got homework today. So we will be sending out that, uh, that list as well so that everyone gets started and doesn't just leave this call and not put anything into practice. So thank you so much, Colleen. Thank you everyone for Thanks, joining guys. us today tomorrow for the sales meeting and then Wednesday for uh, the next Ignite session. Have a good day.